is there a truly reality out there that humans could really know? It's an age-old battle between realists and absolutists. God is not great, how religion ruins everything. And yet it's utterly and totally ridiculous. We need to live for something beyond ourselves. Imagine going back 250 years ago to colonial America, or the colonies as they call them. Suppose, too, like many of the colonists, you had relatives in America. And suppose one day somebody came up to you with a little box, tiny box, and they told you they're going to push a few numbers. And they pushed a few numbers, and you heard sounds coming out of it. And the next thing you knew, you could hear your great uncle Thomas in England speaking to you. And you're, you, and you're sure it's your Uncle Thomas, and he's over in England, and you're in America, and yet, you know, normally that's a trip that takes weeks and weeks, and suddenly, in this little box, you're talking to your uncle in England, and you knew it was your uncle. Wouldn't you believe that that was a miracle? How could that have been anything other than a miracle? See, today we take things like that for granted all the time. We give it no more thought than we do when we walk towards a door and that door opens invisibly for us. Or we get on a machine that lifts us up in the air and takes us thousands of miles through the air. Or we go to a doctor who puts us in a box and takes detailed pictures of our organs. Or police departments, they can put wires on you and they can tell if you are lying or not. The point is, there's so many things that we do today through technology that years ago that would have been deemed miracles, would have been deemed things that were utterly, utterly beyond human comprehension, beyond our understanding of what they were. They would have been deemed miracles. Certainly to the folks living at that time, they would have been miracles. So then I guess the question I ask is, what then is a miracle? How do we define miracles? Could something be miraculous to one person and yet not be miraculous to another? Why is that we today in our modern world, we tend to dismiss the whole idea of miracles altogether? Of course, none of these are easy questions to answer and even to ask them assume certain things that not everybody would agree on. First of all, if you limit all reality to pure natural laws, to pure nature and the working of nature, then something like a miracle is impossible. It's just say it can't happen. If something unusual happened, you would say, well, we just don't have the explanation for it, but it's nothing supernatural. Everything can only be natural. On the other hand, one could argue that we see miracles around us all the time. You know, someone once said the only reason we don't deem the sunrise a miracle is because we see it happen all the time. Imagine if only one time in your life you saw a sunrise or a sunset. You would probably deem it something miraculous, something supernatural, okay? But because they occur daily, we don't give it a second thought any more than we give transatlantic cell phone calls a second thought or an x-ray of a broken bone, which again, to some people, would seem miracles. Thus, simply defining a miracle really isn't that easy, and I wouldn't be so cavalier to dismiss them. You know, it's kind of like those who used to use the black swan image. Well, there's no such thing as a black swan, and you luckily, you know, you, your odds of that are like finding a black swan. And then one day in Australia, they found a black swan, and so that got rid of that argument. Now, because we now understand more than our ancestors did about the law of gravity and the motions of the planets, does that really make it any less miraculous than it really is? If anything, modern science reveals an incredible confluence of amazingly precise physical constants about which life couldn't exist and things which we don't understand. The ancients didn't have the slightest notion of, and even though we understand a little more, they're still filled with, with the miraculous. They're still filled with things that we really don't even begin to understand. 
You know, we don't, you know, even today, something like the, the, the structure of the atom or the intricacies of DNA replication. I mean, wouldn't these seem supernatural to people back then? And are they not, in a sense, supernatural to us as well? Okay, we understand them naturally to a point, and then there's a point way beyond where we don't understand any of it at all. The fact is the miraculous is around us all the time. They might not have a, quote, supernatural character like some of the miracles of Jesus, but there still is this miraculous things all around that we cannot explain through nature and nature alone. It's beyond our understanding. You know, who knows, perhaps as the, you know, the Bible says one day there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth and pain and sin and suffering will be gone. And maybe many of the supernatural miracles that Jesus did, some of the healings and all that, maybe it's very possible in this new world that Jesus could say to us, okay, well, how did I do this healing and how did I do that? And then maybe he could explain to us through a natural process, well, we did this to the DNA, we did that, we did that, and on and on and on, and it could have an explanation to us, a, quote, natural explanation. But to the point is to those who are open, to those who are open, there's something incredibly miraculous about life itself all around us. It's, you know, all around us, there are things that we just don't understand, that all our science, that all our research, that all our, our, our explanations can't take us to. And we said, oh, well, eventually we'll come to an understanding of it. Eventually we'll come to an understanding of it. But maybe we will come to understand more. Maybe we won't. But the fact is, it's a miracle that we're even here. It's a miracle that our heart beats. Every beat of our heart is filled with things that we don't understand. Sure, we understand more than they did 50 years ago. And 50 years from now, they'll understand more than we do now. But there's still always going to be things that are beyond the natural, beyond what we could understand. You know, it was interesting many years ago, uh, uh, a cosmologist, or he made a statement. He said, the more the universe seems comprehensible, the more pointless it seems. And I thought was hilarious was another scientist, another, a woman, she responded, she says, she doesn't understand this idea that the universe have, having to have a point. She says, I don't understand, she says, the universe is merely a system. It's merely a system. So what was the point? She reiterated she didn't, under, she didn't even understand the question of why you would think the universe would have a point. And I thought, man, what a narrow view. What a narrow view of reality. What a narrow view of the world to think it's all just a system and could be explained just as a system when I think there's so much more out there, so much further beyond that. Yes, we tend to take, in many ways, we take the miraculous for granted. We take for granted things that a hundred years ago people would have dropped their jaws at and how much better it would be for us to be able to open our minds and to step beyond the rational, to step beyond what we totally understand and open up to the reality and see what, and to see all the miracles that exist around us every day and all the time.